Welcome back everybody. This is a viewer request video. I asked people on Twitter and YouTube if there's any questions or any tests they wanted me to do on any products I've reviewed in the past. And here's what I came up with. This person's asking about the Hydro Flask versus the coldest water bottle comparison I did. They noticed that the only real difference visually was the lid. They were wondering if you swap the lids, there's going to be a difference in the results. Let's try that and see what happens. I'll do the Hydro Flask versus coldest water bottle cold test once again, swapping the lids and see if there's a difference. All right, here we are. We have the coldest water bottle, which my son's been using. That's why there's uh, there's basketball stickers in there now. Coldest water bottle with the Hydro Flask cap on it. And we have the Hydro Flask with the coldest water bottle cap on it. Same as last time, I got four ice cubes. Some cold water filled the rest of the way. I'll come back in 24 hours and see how it looks. All right, I got to cut this short at 22 hours, but let's see how they look. Hydro Flask, very warm on the outside with the coldest water bottle lid. Coldest water bottle with the hydro flask lid there's no ice obviously left in there here we go oh this coldest water bottle 63 hydro flask 70 71 once again the coldest water bottle one even with the hydro flask lid on there so i guess that uh that answers that question got a couple of questions about the ninja foodie air fry oven one person asked, do you ever find yourself using the Ninja Air Fry toaster in oven anymore after your showdown with the other brand? Someone else asked, can we see more of the Ninja Foodi Air Fryer? What's the best way to clean it? I do use it on a pretty regular basis, I'd say at least once a week. It's been a couple years now. It's starting to show its age, not so much in performance, but just in how it looks. The basket itself is, is starting to look a little bit brown. And I, this is the only one I put in the dishwasher. This has been in the dishwasher. It's just, it's starting to age. It's a little bit not as straight as it was before but warped for the front panel on the glass i put a degreaser on there they tell you not to wash this in the dishwasher so i wash it by hand crumb tray I, I just gave up on i do wash it but there's a big stain in the middle i just can't get it out i put degreaser on there i've soaked it i've done everything nothing the inside what a lot of people don't realize is the way to clean this one you put it up on the side there's a lever back here you pull this down and then you can wipe all this down with a sponge. It's much easier than trying to do it the other way. I do have some grease in there that I can't get, but otherwise it's, it's held up very well. I'm very happy with this product. I, I still recommend it all the time. I have two kitchens I use for my channel, one at the apartment and one at the house. At the house, the only two appliances I have sitting out are this one and the Revolution Toaster. Everything else is put away, so I use that one that much. Here's a good one. It says, you tested the clapper, but I want to know what happens when you listen to a song with clapping in it. The car is my best friend's girlfriend, for example. So that's a great question, but you might wonder why I'm standing out here addressing that question. That's because I'm in the boneyard right now, and the clapper is in box number two, which is the most dreaded box in the entire boneyard. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Aside from those two boxes, which are some extra canned goods, uh, the, this is the Boneyard. 19 numbered containers, all on a spreadsheet. Actually, number 19 isn't even out here yet. But my original ones were not in containers. They were in boxes. So to get to box two, I have, first of all, I have to move that vacuum out of the way. I have to take the Cup Cozy, the Vabroom boxes off, this basket full of random things I haven't put away yet. That's box three. It's not even numbered. Box one. And then get to box two which hopefully the clapper is somewhere near the top, but I'm not hopeful. I'm just gonna take a peek and see if it's on the top, if I'm lucky. I don't see it on the top, of course. Oh man, it's probably in the bottom. It's gonna be, of course it'll be the bottom. Why would it be on the top? It would, there's no reason why it'd be on the top because that would make it too easy for me. I know it's in here somewhere. I found it. I found it. All right, I've got the clapper installed with this lamp. Let's do a test and make sure it still works. Sweet. I'm on Epidemic Sound. They have an entire playlist of clap related music. Oh, wow. It actually, the clapping actually turned the lamp on. Let me keep going. <laughs> it worked. 
Now I can't play the car song due to copyright reasons, but I can turn the sound off and just try it and see if it does work. Well, the cars did activate the clapper, so to answer your question, yes, the clapper will work with the cars and other songs with clapping in it. Riz on Twitter says, hey James, how are you getting on with the Coolify 2? I got mine very recently. It works brilliant, but the battery is very poor. I tend to agree with you. It's a great product, but the battery isn't that great. I should point out that after my review, I did find a new use for it. I got rather sick in early June. I had a high fever. I found that the Coolify 2 provides quite a bit of relief when you have a fever. You know, your head's all hot, your neck's hot, you put it on there, the briefs and the fans, the cooling plates. Now, it's not one of the recommended uses for it, but if you do get sick and have a fever, instead of putting the old washcloth on there that gets warm after a while, Coolify 2 work quite well. Now I'm hoping in future versions they can fix the battery life and maybe bring the price down because as well as it works, the battery isn't good and the price is too high. This question is about pans, which I've reviewed quite a lot of. It says, do you season your nonstick pans? I find some websites that say you should and others say there's no need. I would like to hear your thoughts about that because it seems redundant to me, but I did it anyways. I'm kind of in the same boat with you. I season them whether it says to or not. I know the Hexclad said to season it. I know the Emerald Forever pan said to season it. The Always pan said to season it every month. You're going to be using oil in the pan as it is, so I don't think that seasoning it is really going to hurt anything. Speaking of seasoning the Always pan, it's about time for me to re-season this one. Let me show you why. So you probably, you may or may not be able to see it, but this, this surface is definitely looking kind of ragged. It's definitely time to re-season this one. Even though re-seasoning does help after a while, it's never as good as the first time. These nonstick pans have diminishing returns until re-seasoning doesn't really help. I'm kind of starting to wonder if this one's kind of past its prime and it's kind of beyond hope. I have re-seasoned it before and it seems like the gap between reseasoning is getting less and less so i'm not sure this is going to last much longer so even though i've had to reseason this one and it's getting worse and worse the hex clad has actually held up much better than this one has but to answer your question i season every nonstick pan whether it says to or not i have a question from twitter about the circle water bottle it reads did you have the issue that some flavors run out faster than others also if i don't have a circle bottle but the cap fits the bottle i have will that also have issues i will say that the flavors don't last as long as i wish they did they say six uses that's kind of stretching it maybe if you have it on the lowest setting the entire time where you barely taste it i would probably get three maybe four uses out of it before the flavor starts disappearing i wish it lasted longer as far as the cap fitting bottles goes i think that's by design so i think that if you have a bottle that will fit on i'd say go for it all right next up debbie has a question about the shark stratus vacuum how was the stability of the unit while using attachments? I've had a shark vacuum before, different model, and it always tipped over when using attachments connected to the hose. Do you find it pretty stable? If you're using your attachments, you can get about this much distance, and then you start getting, start getting that. I've noticed that when I'm using my attachments, if it starts getting kind of far away from the unit, it doesn't tip over, it hasn't tipped over me yet, but it does get very unstable. You can definitely feel it kind of pulling. What I end up doing is just putting it as close to me as possible to avoid that. This question asks about the Bartesian. It says, would like to know how the Bartesian drink maker is holding up if you still think it's worth a steep price and need to buy their specific pods. As far as the price goes, that's, that's gonna be up to you how much you use it. If you make a lot of mixed drinks, have a lot of parties, definitely worth the price. You're kind of stuck with the pods. There's no other option. There's no third party that sells them as far as I know. It's holding up pretty well. I recently did a live stream where I was actually making live, drinks live. Let me move over to the, the Bartesian. And there it goes. Not too bad. Occasionally when it's serving the drink, it kind of comes out the side. Moving it can be kind of messy, uh, but otherwise it's held up quite well. This next question is from Dr. Derek Robinson. It's not a product related really question, but I get it asked this one a lot. He was wondering about the Brockport shirt that I wear, and wondering if I went to the university there. Well, I've never actually been there, and I didn't go to the university there, but I have family in the area, so when I wear it, it makes me think about them. Liz on YouTube asked about the solar-powered car air freshener I just re recently reviewed. She wants to know if the ball in the middle of it stays in place when you brake during your drive. Not only does the ball stay in place when you brake, but it also stays in place when you hit speed bumps. In fact, I'll show you. By the way, I'm in an empty parking lot, so I'm not being reckless when I drive. Let's try some hard braking and some speed bumps, and we'll see that it stays in place, I think. Very fast stop. I'm gonna do a hard, another hard stop here. Here we go, hard stop. My GoPro fell over, but the solar ball stayed in place. Let's try some speed bumps now. Speed bump number one. Take this one a little bit higher. This is a big speed bump right here. Boom. Another big speed, I'm kinda of going, kind of going fast over these speed bumps here. 
driving like a maniac not really as much driving as I've done plus I've hit some brakes here and some speed bumps that ball has never even come close to falling out of there. It's, it's, isn't that pretty good? Here's a good one from Twitter. Alyssa asked, the jacket hoodie that turns into a backpack, I have a question about it. When you're wearing it as a jacket and you sit down on a bench and lean back, can you feel the straps from the backpack part? Is it uncomfortable? That's actually a good question. I wish I'd answered in the original review. Let me show you. This is the quick flip. I have it in hoodie mode right now. I don't mind my dogs back there, but these two straps are actually from the backpack. If I turn it around, you can see there are a couple of metal clasp here these are what how you adjust the backpack when it's in backpack mode the clasps are about right here and no i've never noticed them before i've i've used this jacket a lot i used it all winter not once did i ever find them to poke into my back or sit on them or anything so so to answer your question no they're not uncomfortable i've never noticed them before i actually had two questions about the range mate pro which was my favorite product that i reviewed back in 2018. james turner asked do you still use the range mate pro i purchased it after your review and love it janelle Orr asked i really like the microwave grill pan in fact i bought one use it regularly all right so i did use the range mate pro probably three times a week for three years so i got a lot of use out of it and notice i am talking about it in the past tense because i don't use it anymore and let me show you why. All right, everything here looks pretty good, looks pretty good. But when you get to the actual surface, I noticed that I started developing some spots in there where the coating was coming off. That didn't happen until probably a couple hundred uses though. It was a lot, but it, it, did, it did start to come off and I didn't feel safe using anymore. So I ended up buying another a similar item I'm not as happy with, so I might be going back to the RangeMate Pro. I got a lot of use out of it, but the coating started coming off, so I stopped using it. Surprisingly, nobody asked me about the Moon Pod. What's up with that, Bailey? All right, so that's it. If there's any videos I mentioned or any past products I mentioned, I'll have links to those in the description below. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time. This isn't a product-related question, but I thought it'd be fun to stick in here. Gavin says maybe a video of you playing the bass someday. So I started playing the bass before most of you were probably even born back in 1982. I still remember my first bass lesson. No, no, no by Def Leppard. And also, of course, 